Some are pencil in Najipaka. Don't come disguising yourself. If you are black, please, you are black. If you are dark skinned, you are dark skinned. If you are orange skinned, you remain orange skinned. If you are pink, remain pink. If you are hair, that tango that we cover our hairs. So what about Najipaka Vitu Zingine Ambazo ni strange items? Usi jaribu kujiweka vitu strange items. Someone, hallelujah. Mavazi, wanawake, musibaye mavazi ambazo natuwa maumbile zenyu inje. Okay, shona kanzu, please, shona kanzu na thifu. There is no one interested in your figure. So when you come to church, you are coming before God. God knows what he created. Anajua vila likuumba. So please, vaa mavazi ambazo zinaku funika vizuri. Don't put on uh, attires that uh, magnify your figure in the sanctuary. We don't want and I don't think God is interested. You will get yourself into trouble uh, because of your mistakes. Oh, pia tunapokuja bebe ni biblia. Beba biblia nyingi. You can have your mother tongue Bible plus your Swahili translation Bible. Then you can also have English translation Bible. And all our Bibles that we use, we I prefer uh, uh, the most authoritative, which is King James Version of the Bible. So we define that one. You'll be burning nazo. Don't carry this. They have been over revised However you can have other versions for your own study But in my preaching and my exposition I authoritatively use King James version of the Bible Pia nikikumbusha watu ni bad manners Kwena beleza buwana na hali ambazo Hauna udhamini Tunadhamini uwepo wabwana So we show value and that's why we go before God uh, with all that we have plus who we are. And I don't need to define that because now go panga line ya kuhubiri pesa. Iyo line is yangu. Iyo line is kuitiwa. If you are a, if you are a Christian that loves God, no one should, no one should be reminding you about your giving as a worship. So that one, our tithes, our offerings, our giftings, our sacrifices, uh, you know how you come before God with them. Others are coming with vows. Some are coming also with uh, uh, with the uh, pledges. Do so in Jesus' name. We show kwamba pia in our meetings we we detest persons who are coming to to fact find. They are coming like journalists and investigators. We shall handle you very badly. We shall handle you very ruthlessly. There is nothing to investigate and there is nothing here to interrogate. If you are coming to worship God, come and worship God. So, naomba bwana wasaidie. Utoke hapo maishiba na roho. Come here hungry. Leave this place filled by the Holy Ghost. We don't offer food. The only thing we shall offer you is Jesus and his word. And of course, Holy Communion for those um, who are qualified to partake of the Holy Communion. Mambo le sama kusu watu nakuja madabahuni. I believe that um, those of us who are coming, you are coming honorably. And um, my heart desires what ambao walipa garama, what ambao mekamu liman, you are coming to break your fasting on the altar. You are coming to break your fasting. You've been fasting, uh, whatever style of fasting you are fasting, uh, that is what we recognize. So you must have fasted in a certain way. That fasting that you are fasting, what come around your mother bow, it will fight this hand. But person that uh, you've just been out there waiting, 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 then you want to pounce on the altar because there are miracles. Uh, personally, I don't think that is valuable. What uh, Mikate, you don't show, you've not lifted faith. Ujainiwa imani. Tunapofunga chakula, kakumilimani kwa saumu, tunainiwa imani kwa buwana. So how about those who are just coming, hakuna imani uliinua? Really? I don't think you are serious. And uh, some people may just need to really think. Inua imani yako mbele za buwana on your own way. Because we have no miracles for sale. We don't sell anything. So come believing God. And I might not even lay hands on you. So if you are coming that I lay hands on you, please know, I will not lay hands on anybody. So kila mutu inua imani yako unapukuja. But watu ambao ni watu wenye mzaha. And watu ambao we announce fasting, they didn't take it serious. We are now seeking God. They never took it serious. And so others are asking a question. How those of us who never fasted, are we allowed? I pray, I say, I may look for a world where I is. We don't play those games. We don't entertain those games. If you really want God, we announce, unless you are sick, 
unless you are one that was sick and uh, maybe you are breastfeeding or you are on medication or something like that, your, your, your case, you couldn't really uh, fast. But there are those who also lift their faith without fasting. You could have lifted your faith in other ways. Um, those ones are exceptional cases. But um, I want to tell people, come to the altar with the fear of God. God sees your heart. God sees your heart. That's a heart that attracts God. There is a heart that attracts God. There are hearts that don't attract God. A heart that attracts God is a heart that has faith. Someone, hallelujah. So, uh, we want also to reiterate and emphasize that uh, those who come here, can everybody switch off your phones? I don't want to see those flashing, flashing on the altar when I preach, please. It's bad manners. Uh, then, uh, those of us who were, uh, who were ministers, all pastors to be among us, the first one to arrive, please. And then all uh, ministry workers be the first ones to arrive. And also um, intercessors and prophets. All the others, you can come on the D-Day. But the rest that have assignments, uh, because there are rooms and our facilities are still being worked on, we no want other persons. We just, um, let's have an order. Uh, those of us who have been arriving, keep yourself in your hotels. Come for lunch hours, but book yourself in your hotels. Otherwise, those who are coming for the rooms and want to occupy the quarters, they, those are partners. We want to let you know that uh, follow the order. So we shall have matrons who are in charge of quarters. We shall have also, um, we shall have uh, proper total, in, uh, in total security in our quarters so that you don't have persons who may want to come and fix, fix us or bring us candles. So we are very strict because we, our intelligence tells us a lot of things. So we have intelligence, spiritual intelligence about persons who may want just to come and plant some evil stuff in our quarters. And so we don't want people arriving early before no one knows you. Please uh, just take that one. You want to advise our pastors and our ministers accordingly. Praise be to Jesus. So you're welcome. Those of us flying in from other nations, you're welcome. Those of us coming in from other counties, you're also welcome. And uh, Jesus is the guest of honor. So to him be glory. I want to thank God for all of us and we are continuing with the sermon uh, anointing, understanding anointing and God's power. Understanding anointing and God's power. Understanding anointing and God's power. Kufahamo upako pamoja na nguvu za buwana. Uh, I think there was a bit of mix-up in our uh, titling. I think that was an error. It is, not, uh, it is not exposing anointing. It is exploiting anointing. Exploiting anointing uh, for, for purpose or uh, stroke destiny contention. So exploiting anointing for purpose stroke destiny contentious purpose and destiny go together so beside destiny you can also add the word purpose purpose i really want to those of us who are pastors you are ministers uh, take the sermon very serious even now because what i want to talk about is quite uh, quite some food for us and uh you see, when you'll be coming for the convocation, you'll be having a lot of demonstration of power during the convocation. It will be a demonstration of power. And uh, so the word you are getting now, uh, bank on it. Because when the move of God begins on this altar, majorly sometimes we don't have enough time. We see the Lord himself. So take what I'm preaching serious uh, and run up to the annual prophetic summit. Because I think Sunday service is a 24-hour service. 24-hour 20, service. So please prepare yourself. And then also when it comes to uh, Kesha, there's, um, our Friday is also 24 hours. You only have a break to go and change your clothes. And uh, take, uh, take your showering for a few hours, then we are back. 
Saturday, uh, that means Friday, then again Saturday, we'll only have a break of a few hours, then Saturday morning, we continue again. Uh, who knows, maybe too late in the night, and uh, that catches up with the Sunday again. And uh, so, kuja kama majipanga, don't become weak. And uh, so, I only pray that in between, there will be room for a lot of word sharing. Uh, otherwise, it will be a moment, I and mean, it will be a conference or convocation for uh, gifts, impartation of anointing for gifts, dedication of gifts, unveiling of gifts. That's all will happen around in that conference. So right now, if you are hearing the word, please get the most out of it, because what I'm teaching you is what you shall be seeing, demonstrating. May the Lord grant you uh, grace in Jesus' name. So I'm looking at an uh, impartation uh, for that anointing which you need uh, to exploit matters ministry. So there will be impartation. trying to uh, solicit the blessing and the favors that comes with Isaiah 58. The favors and the blessing that uh, we are promised in Isaiah 58 are actually uh, a preserve for those who pay the price. So Isaiah 58 and the blessings prescribed therein plus the benefits that are prescribed therein are conditional. They are on a condition. And I gave an example of Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19. Uh, that also is a condition. So you find persons that are ignorant. They don't pay tithes. They don't stand with any ministry. I mean, they are not partners with God in the ministry. They are a servant of God who eats from them. Eh? Then they want to quote Philippians 4 verse number 19. And my God, are you Paul? It is Paul who was declaring a blessing over those who are his partners. That I, Paul, my God, shall supply your needs, you people. So, we know that the Macedonian church supported Paul. We know that the Philippian church also benefited from Paul. So much that the Macedonian church will bring so much that Paul will also use to support the church in Philippines. Someone hallelujah. So Paul will declare that one in his capacity as an authority. A carrier of grace. He will say God bless you people. You have stood with me. My God shall supply your needs. My God shall appear strong over your lives. My God. So he shall supply all that you need. In accordance to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. So Paul had an identity with Christ Jesus. Paul was a worker with Christ Jesus. Paul was an apostle sent by Christ Jesus. Paul was a servant of God ordained through Christ Jesus. So, he had the privilege 
to declare a blessing. I am privileged to declare a blessing over your life. So, the, the, the blessing that Paul declared over the Macedonian church and the, the partners who will partner with him was conditional. It was because those who are his partners in prayer, those who are his partners in ministry, those who are his flock, and they, they were actually appropriating Galatians 6 and verse number 6. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he reaps. So verse number 6, he says that um, Paul has been investing in them spiritually. So it behooves them to reciprocate materially. Hallelujah. So much that verse number 7 says, God is not mocked. What a man sow with, that shall he also reap. Someone quote that online. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we have a media that is also sharp with machines? So that when I quote you, that thing, you quote it. Because I want to go open the Bible for that. So Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 6. Is this that I'm doing now? I'm feeding you spiritually. Then verse number 7. Eh, demands that you reciprocate. Otherwise you'll be mocking God. So God is not mocked. It is conditional. So Paul will say. And my God therefore. Will supply. Will meet your needs. Why? Because you have met a condition. You recognize grace. You recognize anointing. Hallelujah. So the same applies to Isaiah 58. That is actually largely being abused by many ignorant Christians. And uh, you may need to learn again. So we have Christians who don't pray. They don't fast. They don't pay a price. They don't get themselves into spiritual exercise. They don't exercise at all. Then they want to partake of the blessing here. No. And I said yesterday, what you can really believe God for is uh, his masses. You're like, God, have mercy on me. So there are those that God can do for us, privileges that God can actually do for you on the basis called mercy. And that is available even for others out there that are not really born again. But um, as we saw it yesterday, uh, when we pray and we fast, and this one we do every year, and uh, we do it um, uh, because we obey the word, there are benefits that we draw. So the benefits we draw uh, also includes our health. We are healthy people. We are a healthy people. We are a strong people. We are strong. And we draw the benefit of divine health. From obeying Isaiah 58. So as a ministry. Something that we thank God for. We don't have. We have not witnessed. Cases of. Um, uh, maladies. Sicknesses. Diseases. Um, uh, you know. We have not had that. I believe that God has favored us. Because of um, the covenant we hold. By Isaiah 58. So there's a covenant we operate. This covenant opportunes us and privileges us to, I mean, to enjoy divine health. So it is there. So also health, then also life, then also wellness, then also nourishment. Uh, we see them there. Those are benefits that are there. And um, as you can see, verse number 11 Verse number 10, Bible saying that if, uh, if thou draw out your soul to the hungry, that means you meet the expectation, the demands of Isaiah 58. Bible says that uh, uh, God will satisfy uh, your soul and uh, your light shall arise in obscurity and your darkness be as the noonday. So that word light I belabored the meaning of that light yesterday. So much that all of us now know that light connotes anointing. Someone, hallelujah. And then Bible says in verse number, number 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. That, it's, that uh, means uh, his presence. He'll be, he'll, uh, he'll be ever guiding you. So, uh, you can be sure of his presence. You are ever guided. Can you stop exaggerating my line? 
And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. So a Christian needs to be guided not once. It is expected that you are guided continually. Everything the Lord guides you. So if God be your guide continually, then it will be because you too, you are continually abiding in his presence. You are continually uh, abiding in his will. You can't go wrong. You won't go wrong. Someone, hallelujah. And the Bible says, and it shall satisfy thy soul in drought. See, and Tola Bakuria Tab. And satisfy your soul in drought. So there is a time of drought in our life as we pursue destiny, as we fulfill destiny, plus our contention for recovering destiny. There are seasons of drought. There are episodes of drought. There are, uh, there are uh, cases of drought. Drought can connote sickness. Drought can connote uh, misfortune. Drought can connote disaster. Drought can connote disappointments that may discourage you. In such moments, the Lord will satisfy your soul. So it's not just a drought that is environmental, but the drought also that may be uh, spiritual. So things that affect you. So some of people said there are people who are uh, in spiritual drought. They are so uh, dry. They have nothing. They have no anointing. They have no faith. That spiritual drought. So God says he'll satisfy your soul. Why? Fasting. It is a benefit that you draw. Because you expand yourself into fasting. The Bible says there, and shall make fat thy bones. That means health. Thou shall be like a watered garden. That means flourishing. Your works and your labors, you employ finances, you employ your giftings, you employ them, and they begin to flourish. So you'll be like a, a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not so your waters don't fail so that means they will be a people who draw from you they drink from you you are a fountain you benefit people every person every soul that come to you they are like they get answers they get solutions you know so you are like um, a water spring and others draw and quench their thirst from you. Someone may that be so for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That Bible says here, uh, your waters do not fail. So that's why every year you are a mature, mature Christian. You, you, you designate some days for fasting. You are mature. Why? Because your waters shouldn't fail. Water failing means anointing drying. Water's failing means your power drying. Water's failing means that you are in drought. Who is interested in a Christian who is dry? Who is interested in a Christian who is ever dry? Who is interested in a Christian who is seasonal? You only have water seasonally. Then after some season you have no water. You only have fruit seasonally. After some seasons you have no fruit. Who will be interested in you? So those who care about their being fruitful, they are being impactful, they are being a, a blessing, you are being a, one that seasons, you are one that is an answer, you are one that, uh, you know, you are relevant in matters life. You will fast your food every year. You will fast your food every month. You shall be fasting every week. Someone, the Lord grant you understanding in Jesus' name. 
The Lord grant you to understand in Jesus' name. So there is a place of you doing what? You fasting. Because you want to continue maintaining the anointing. You maintain the anointing. The Bible says that your waters will not fail. That means spirit power. That means nourishment. That means the anointing that is bestowed upon you dries not. Then the Bible says also verse number 12. And they that shall be of thee, as I said yesterday, they shall build the old west places. Yeah? Those are people that you raise. You raise a generation. There are people around you. Person that are acquainted with you. Some of them are your friends. Some are your relatives. Some are your siblings. Others are your family. Some are your workers. Some are you are in ministry. Others you work with them in ministry. Persons around you. Bible says that them that shall be of thee. So for me, there will be ministry partners. For me, there will be persons who partake of God's grace via my life. For me, it will mean person that God has entrusted to me to be their shepherd. The Bible tells me that uh, uh, because of my right standing, my faith allegiance, my spiritual discipline of fasting, the Bible says that such of mine will build the old waste places. That means being restored in matters of business, you recover destiny, you recover. So that means also they cover your parent under matters. Hallelujah. Plus the authority over your life also matters. Then also the Bible says, Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. So foundation of many generations, the Bible says that you shall raise. Keep tampering with my line. I think we'll have to talk. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And uh, thou shalt be um, called the repairer of the bridge. So what says here, yeah, raising foundations. Now, raising foundations is what I mentioned, like uh, people come to this ministry when uh, their life, things have closed up. Everything has shut down. Marriage shut down. You are... Um, Vision for marriage shut down. Vision for business shut down. Vision for finances shut down. Matters life and fulfilling destiny shut down. So you are just like an empty shell. Or you are confused. Or some people are just like uh, despondent. They have given up. So they come, they come here and it's like they have nothing to live for. So when they come here, then something new needs to happen in their lives. They start afresh. So they're like, uh, start to, you start building their lives. So we built you to become God's building. Now, about God's building, uh, that is, um, should be 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We see Apostle Paul in verse number 9. Uh, Bible says in verse number 9, we are God's buildings. We are God's husbandry. So, first um, Corinthians chapter 3 should be verse number 9. So, verse number 9 says that um, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. God's building. So a building has foundation. Verse number 10, Bible says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me, that is Apostle Paul, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builded thereupon. That another is you. So I laid the the foundation, then you must build on that foundation. So, Bible says, but let every man who buildeth thereupon take heed how he buildeth whatever he's building. So that's a rider in verse number 10. Tail end of it. So I lay the foundation, that's apostolic, and uh, 
you now need to build. So you came, you were nothing. You came, you didn't have anything. And that's why you should always give glory back to God. You came here, there was no health, there was no peace, there was no joy, there was no hope for you. You came here, your life was battered, beaten, battered, scattered. And then you started hearing the words. Online, you've been hearing the word. So I've been using the word to build a foundation upon which you should build your life. So Paul tells us here. But he says, a caution. Let every man uh, that is building their own, their upon, take heed. Watch out. Watch out how you are building. Don't misuse grace. Someone, hallelujah. Now Isaiah 58 and verses number number 12. Bible says, part number B, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. So who are those generations? You and me. You are the generation that God has given me to start raising you up again. So I lay foundations for many. I, you, we have to destroy all the foundations. Then we build new foundations. We destroy all the foundations. And that's why when you join a ministry like this one, there are people who should, be, should not expect uh, things to turn around immediately. When you join this ministry, you are a patient. So there may be a need of your old foundations being destroyed. You had the foundations of witchcraft, foundations of sorcery, foundations of superstition, foundations that are satanic and demonic. They were so carnal. They were so worldly. You came from churches that were occultic. You followed servants that were occultic. Now, when you join a ministry where now you come here to be repaired, first thing first, your foundations must be destroyed. Jesus will not allow that we, he built himself on a foundation that originally was faulty. Now the foundations a Christian will have, they, I mean, uh, the foundations that you have raised uh, are actually as a result of the messages, preachings, doctrines that you have received. Anointings under which you sat. Persons who impacted your life. What stuff did you feed on? They determine your foundations. So if your foundations were faulty, if your foundations were faulty, they were corrupt. They were questionable. It will be a fallacy. If Jesus will, uh, will build himself on you with those foundations, it will be a fallacy for you to build another found, to build eh, with this word a building on top of that evil um, evil foundation. Unless what you are building is not Christ. Unless what you want to build isn't God. But if that which you want to build is what is ordained of God, then first things first. You will go through a season of being dug out, excavated, dug out, excavated, and it will be quite a tough season. Oh, since I joined that ministry, then this is happening, please, you are a patient on your own dimension. You are admitted in a different world. Whereas others are blessed, you allow and accept yourself to be dug, to be excavated, to be dealt with, and you know, the machinery that uh, will deal with you, they are caterpillars, bulldozers, eh? uh, <laughs> uh, deep sinking machines that deal with rocks so that uh, your foundations is so you'll be like, you'll only be dreaming tinga tinga, caterpillar, and if there's someone that uh, is human, he'll be using mattock, hammer, and chisel. Who is that? That probably must be you. So that everything that you have in your foundation is totally destroyed. Then a new foundation 
begins to be raised. That is what uh, prophetic ministry, uh, apostolic ministry is all about. So, there are people that have been raising foundations upon you, many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the preach. That's what they call me. The restorer of paths to dwell in. So I restore your paths. I restore paths that forsake the paths of wickedness. Uh, embrace the path of righteousness. Follow Jesus. Abandon Satan. Abandon darkness. Follow into the light of Jesus. Now that's what I do. So I disposition you on the highway of holiness. Highway of holiness is what we read in Isaiah 62. Should be verses number uh, verses number 10. The Bible says you go through that's apostolic and prophetic. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Now that's what I do. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Someone hallelujah. Now that's what we do with you. So that eventually you become a good servant become a good minister, become a good wife, become a good father, you know, become a, you become a great businessman, become a great teacher, become a great professional because we work on you. Hallelujah. Now that's anointing huh? that should help exploit matters, destiny, and matters purpose. So today we want to look at the matters uh, Dimension of ministry gifts and callings. Ministry gifts and callings. I, my regret and my disappointment is that uh, I think I shared uh, someone almost similar to this one sometime last year when you were also pursuing we on the mountain like this. And we, I talked about gifts and callings. The year ended. He said, I've harvesting a person that will be noble ministers. I've only harvested foolish ministers. God is so disappointed. Harvesting ministers who are fools. After hearing the word that we received last year, some have just uh, abused the grace. They are bad worshippers, bad praisers of God. They are useless in the vineyard. Intercessors who are not serving God's purpose. The only thing you can, you can associate with them is strife. Pastors striving. Hmm? Ministry workers who are uh, a disappointment to God. They are not reliable. They are not dependable. They are not profiteering the kingdom. They have become a shame. We've had ministry workers in all departments that God is just like uh, replacing them because they have, they have abused grace. Those who have been ashes are not serving as ashes. And if they are serving, they are just undoing the work of God. We shared this word last year. And uh, people received anointing because the theme for last year, annual prophetic summit, was actually Acts chapter 3, verse number 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So that uh, times of refreshment shall come from the presence of the Lord Most High which actually you've been waiting and desirous. That's revival. With which now you'll be able to continue in your matters, destiny pursuits, destiny contention, destiny recovery, plus destiny uh, fulfillment. And I remember teaching us that uh, the giftings that we have, the giftings of the Holy Ghost, we call them uh, ministry gifts. They are part and parcel of our destiny fulfillment. So much that if 
You don't align your life with the gifts. Then there are realms and dimensions of destiny that you won't access. Because the only identity that grants you access into those realms or those dimensions of, of destiny, the only identity and the only qualification will be your gifts. So you may have been called to serve in church or in the ministry of Christ Jesus as an intercessor. Maybe a teacher. Maybe you are a prophetess. So, you are being a ministry worker, operating spiritual gift. Is the get pass, the qualification that allows the favors of God upon your life. Favors that uh, you're going to use also in uh, the entirety of your life. In marriage, health, finance, strength, you know, relationships. But a dummy Christian never understands that. You won't consider your business, your profession, is as, I mean, as greater than the calling of God. Someone wake up. You may be looking like in church or in the ministry of Jesus. You're just a worshiper. You're just a praise and worship minister. You're just a sanctuary keeper. You're just one that serves um, as a dog keeper. You are in churches to arrange chairs and all that. Maybe you're a cleaner. Ministry gifts. The ministry you are gifted in ministry to serve as a teacher, Sunday school teacher. You are a men's minister. You are a pastor. You are an evangelist. You are, a, a, you are an evangelist. You evangelize some 10 people, 20, 30, 5 maybe. Or maybe you, mean you evangelize for two, two at a time in the neighborhood. You are an evangelist. So what is the ministry gift you have? You are gifted an anointing in that dimension. Evangelist. Please, numbers don't matter. God will give you anointing. Maybe he give you anointing for two people at a time. Ten people at a time. A hundred people at a time. A thousand at a time. He graduates you maybe to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions. Anointing also. You graduate. But little do we know or little do you, many of us know that um, your administration you are being a minister. That means you are exploiting uh, the anointing for ministry gifting. Is what qualifies you to eat, to do business, to be a teacher, to earn, to have a house, to clothe yourself, to raise a family. Because those are where God releases favor. So you are fulfilling destiny in those dimensions is because in matters ministry you are right with God. But foolish Christians they magnified the minor and belittled the major. They majored in what was minor or what is minor in their lives. Then they despised the major and mistaking them to be the minor. So you are a, a, a secondary school teacher. 
And you're like, you give a lot of weight. You give a lot of attention. And a lot of sacrifice. For your, for your being a, employed as a teacher. But uh, the call of God on your life, you give it lip service. You give it no attention at all. You're like only Sunday is when you appear, praise God, you want to look busy. Uh, one, two, three there and uh, you know, but the rest, 90% of your life energy teaching. You needed to have been wiser to balance both. Yet, this one that you are a minister, you are gifted eh, for ministry is it uh, in the vineyard. Is actually what qualifies you anointing. That anointing is what keeps you also employed as a teacher in your profession. Remember that uh, in your profession, you are employed and you are contracted for a time. When you attain certain um, certain age, you are retired. If it's Kenya, maybe 60 or 65 years. They told go home. We don't need you anymore. But in the serving of God, there's nothing like go home. So I'm not saying that you be lazy in your profession. That's a profession. Please differentiate a profession and a calling. A profession and a calling. Our callings demands anointing. Our callings demands ministry gifts. Functioning with ministry gifts demands anointing. The reason why many Christians are failures is because they disconnect themselves from anointing. Then they run dry in their professions. You end up having debt as a businessman. You end up being indebted with loans as a career, eh? a career professional. You only borrow from the bank and you, you leave borrowing. And so you, you toil out there. You are toiling. You are toiling because there's no anointing for you there. Anointing that you need for you to operate in the marketplace. That anointing is resident in the house of God. And you qualify to tap into that anointing by virtue of your calling, by virtue of your ministry, by virtue of, uh, of uh, your placement in the body of Christ. Someone, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that um, and the anointing, that is first um, John chapter 2, verse number 20. And the anointing, the action of God, which is from the Holy One, shall teach you all things. Now, that's the anointing. Will teach you all things. It will teach you the anointing of God. It will teach you that, hey, you are an engineer, yes. Where you are working, you are employed as an engineer. But remember that God also has a place for you to serve in his kingdom. You are being an engineer is the place of your manifestation. You manifest there as an engineer. You manifest there as a doctor. Manifest there as a business fellow. You manifest there. So you manifest what you have been uh, made. You manifest what you have accumulated. You manifest what you have actually acquired. So that's the place of manifestation. So you're being an engineer, you're being a teacher, you're being a professional, whatever professional you are. Is Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14, 15, and 17. 
actually begins with verse number 13. Matthew 5, verse number 13. Bible calls us, we are salt. You are the salt on earth. Only ensure that, that you don't become useless. That you don't lose your savour. Let God throw you out and men trample on you. Let God throw you out and uh, men uh, trample on you. So how many Christians have lost their saltiness? They lost it because they never understood anointing. You never regarded the place of anointing. Now, most unfortunate and dreadful is that if you continue in that kind of state, you will become a failure in the marketplace as well. You may end up cursing God. You will end up blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You will end up also criticizing the word of God. Demonizing the church of Jesus. You will be uh, punching holes on the promises of God. You slowly become an antichrist. You miss heaven. When you don't fulfill destiny. It will be illegal for you to enter heaven. It will be illegal for you to enter heaven. You enter heaven as who? What did you do on earth? Because heaven is a, a place for our resting. That means on earth we walked. Heaven is our home for rest. Because on earth we toil. Heaven is our place for resting and enjoying. In the presence of God. Being rewarded. Being celebrated. You know. Being comforted in heaven. Because on earth. There is something we did. We are rewarded. On, we shall be rewarded in heaven. Because while on earth. We accomplished something. We become victorious. Bible says that we are overcomers. There are things we overcame. In our overcoming the enemy on earth, we imagine victorious in our professions, victorious in our ministries, victorious in, uh, in serving God. And so our being victorious was because there was anointing that we were given. We operated in anointing to become victors. Eventually, we make a heaven where we'll be rewarded. Where we'll be rewarded. The master Jesus will say, come home, welcome home, my beloved son, my beloved daughter, Welcome home on earth. You did great works. While on earth. You did it. You made God proud. You made God happy. You. Uh, you manifested God. While on earth. People saw you. In business. They saw God. They saw you in career. They saw God. They saw you in ministry. They saw Jesus. The Lord is not unfaithful. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 50, 15. Verse number 58. That uh, God. Hmm, shall actually reward us. So 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse number 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, comma, unmovable, comma, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord. The word there is always abounding. That means ever present. Where? In the Lord's vineyard. Where? In the Lord's presence. Where? In the will of God. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Please, we are laboring in the Lord Jesus. We are laboring in the Lord Jesus. I am laboring now, but in the Lord Jesus. So if someone, I, I said to someone, I think last week, that we are limited in Christ. My operations are within the boundaries called Christ Jesus. My operations are within the territory called Jesus Christ. My operations, my manifestation as boundaries in Christ. So Christ is my boundaries. So Paul tells us here that uh, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Someone, hallelujah. So we are in the Lord to work. We are in the Lord to serve. We are in the Lord to serve with him. And we serve in him. So every place we go, we manifest Christ here, Christ there, Christ here, as a teacher, as a marketer, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a doctor, whatever it is, that's your profession. But where do you tap anointing from? We tap into the anointing that God has released by our giftings and by our callings. Someone hallelujah. Someone hallelujah. You position yourself in the body of Christ as a ministry worker. That you are being a ministry worker positions you to receive anointing. This verse, um, verse number 58, became alive for me when I wanted to quit ministry. I was in a church, I think uh, my, I was a minister, yes, I was a prophet in church, but uh, I was not officially recognized so that I could earn support. But I was in that church anyway, so once occasionally I'll be given some food, occasionally I've been sustained and uh, I don't know that God will tell them, do not give him tomorrow. And um, so I was in church alone. I was on the pulpit and I was actually resigning. I cried. I was saying, God, I have a wife, I have children. You know, God, you brought me out of entrepreneurship. And uh, I know how to survive and how to earn. And so, yeah, God, I'm hungry. I can't pay house rent. I can't take my children to good schools. And, uh, you know, life has beaten me. I'm battered. I was actually despondent. And I was actually resigning. I said, God, uh, me and you, allow me to serve you, but uh, let me go back to being an entrepreneur. And uh, I had actually making my prayers. I was crying and I was just like, yeah, let me now go. It was midweek. There was nobody else in church. Then I heard God's voice. And I thought God was speaking from an office where we count offerings. It was locked. I'll hear the voice of God as like his voice was coming from the small dilapidated um, structure we have inside the church, which is an office for counting offerings. So I had a voice, I had his voice, and his voice was word for word for word of this uh, this uh, first Corinthians 15 verse number 58. By the way, at that time that I was hearing God speak to me uh, loudly, this verse. This verse had never ever impacted my life. And I can't, I don't remember if I told this particular portion of the scripture was anywhere in my memory. That is the moment, it was daytime. 
All the doors were closed because I loved praying with closed doors and closed windows because I didn't want someone to disturb me. And I had this. Therefore, my beloved servant, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound eh, in the work that I've given thee. For you know that your labor in me is not in vain. My tears change because when the Lord speaks, you can really laugh. Even if you are so happy, you will have tears of happiness, tears of joy. And that's what has happened to me. When God speaks good and speaks bad, still there are tears uh, flowing. I found myself sobbing and crying because he repeated his voice severally like an echo. Severally like an echo in church. That was uh, 20, was it 2011? I was actually throwing in the towel. So God was assuring me that uh, you need to remain faithful and be firm. Be the bankable. Be ye reliable. Be ye dependable. Be ye faithful in the call. Serve God eh? without wavering. Don't waver. Don't be one that be tossed on the left, on the right. Don't be one that is like unpredictable. Don't be one that is easy and quick to give up. Don't you surrender. But instead, abide in the work of the Lord. Keep abiding. Keep staying. Keep abiding. Keep on staying in the work of the Lord. Why? For your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So do we labor also in the vineyard? Yes. There are times I come here and no zeal has to preach. There are times I have like to carry myself because I am tired. There are times I come to labor in the vineyard. Yet I didn't have enough sleep. I ministered in the night for some people online. I ministered in the night for some people in other nations. Then my sleep wasn't enough. So if I come here and I am tired, my body is like, can't take me. But I say, we go, we push on. Sometimes you are so tired until you can't eat. Do you know? You can be so tired until you, 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 your body refuses food. But it is there. You are like, if there is a way I can take this food, then I dissect my stomach. Then take the food manually, place it there. Then lock my womb. Let my stomach digest because I only need energy. There are times food does not taste in your mouth. So you want to force the food. You are eating but there is no appetite. You are eating but uh, your body does not feel the taste. Why? The body is tired. But what is Christ saying? Abound in the work. So after abounding like this, being tired like this, heaven will be the place for me to rest. Someone, hallelujah. The place for resting. So if you enter there and you never did anything on earth, I say it will be illegal. It will be illegal that you lazy on earth. You are just lazing. You just caroused on earth. You are just carousing. Just passing time. Then we see you in heaven. Don't be cheated. God never makes mistakes. I love what um, the writings of Moses. In the writing of Moses, I think it's in Deuteronomy, it says. That there is no unrighteousness 
with God. There is no unrighteousness. His works are perfect. His ways are perfect. There is no unrighteousness with God. He actually knows who are fit to make heaven. By the time you make heaven, there will be no shortcut. There will be no bribery. Neither will there be favoritism. What you sow is what you reap. What you labor for qualifies your reward in heaven. And that is if you keep faith and you retain your ticket for salvation in holiness. You can labor on earth, yes, but you can miss heaven because you forfeited your ticket. You, co you corrupted and you forfeited. You corrupted covenant. So if you're one that labors, you labor well. But when it comes to covenant of salvation, you abuse it. Forget about heaven. So those are two things. You can labor right but still miss heaven because matters covenant, your covenant with God demands that you maintain holiness and that your ticket for heaven which is salvation remains uh, undefiled and tampered with. And your name, you labor to make sure that your name remains listed amongst the saints of God. In the living book of life. But you find Christians. Some of them their names. Are not in the living book of life. Because they have corrupted covenant. They have flattered covenant. They have breached the terms of covenant. They have breached the terms of. Uh, uh, the terms of engagement with God. But if you shall labor and be assured to be partakers of the heavenly rewards as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 because we shall have rewards. You are having those rewards will be because while on earth you labored righteously. You labored Righteously. So, our, our journey to heaven is actually like uh, soccer players on earth. You are playing soccer. Um, the years I, I played soccer in my youthfulness, uh, I think our, those are years in our smallness. Soccer has rules. So if while when playing soccer or while playing soccer, you go against the rules, uh, there's a referee that will fault you. You'll be faulted because you have you have breached the rules. Either you've harmed someone, or either you are offside, or maybe. Um, in discipline in the field. So there are rules you, you play along with the rules. Now the outcome of your match, maybe you may be victorious, but you may be adjudicated. And if you be found wanting, then that match will be forfeited. Will be counted a loss. Though you won, you get this, that match get forfeited, disqualified. So if it was a league in the league, you are relegated. Now, something can happen to a saint. You may on earth appear like you are serving, you are like a Christian, you carry your Bible, you come to church, it appears like mm, you look right. But remember that God weighs our motives. God weighs our works. He places us on the wing scale. What are your motives? How holy are you? Do you 
you maintain and retain the place of holiness? Or you are just playing? Let me just sing. Don't care about holiness. Let me just worship anyway. No one knows whether I am sexually immoral. Let me preach anyway. No one knows that I'm, I am a womanizer. Let me usher. Let me be a sanctuary keeper. Let me be an evangelist. No one knows if I am a thief. I am still in business. No one knows if my ministry, my serving is for cover up. Nobody knows. But let me serve anyway. They know me as a church elder. I'm known as a deacon. Deaconess. You are playing the game. But you are breaching the rules. Holiness. Righteousness. Fear of God. For you to make heaven. Will be a dream. For you to enter into God's rest. It will be a dream. Forget it. But now you can cheat us. You can deceive us. You can blind us. You can fool us. And maybe you can look like you are fooling God. But remember God is never fooled. Maybe he's quiet. He has not exposed you. Maybe God is quiet. He has never exposed you. So you are feigning. You are, you are, you are assuming that God. Since he doesn't know. He hasn't seen me. Your day shall come. Maybe God might not expose you. Maybe he may not expose you because already you are judged. So why expose you? He leave you to live waiting for your judgment. We can do all that we do. But in their doing, in our doings in matters destiny, we fail and our failure is because we are not taught. We lack understanding. And uh, our lacking of understanding and our being limited in our learning is because we relegated or ignored the place of anointing. And you can tell how many Christians fast their food. Yet fasting is a gateway to tapping into anointing for service. How many? You are a minister, you want to cast demons. You are a minister, you want to subdue devils. You are a minister, you want to teach people. You are a minister, you want to heal people. You are a minister of healing. Because anointing can also place as a minister of health and healing. Miracles, signs, and wonders. That's a ministry. Others in the ministry of hospitality and uh, benevolence. Others are placed under anointing the ministry uh, of widows and uh, mercy. You show mercy to widows and the poor. It's a ministry. The anointing of God places you in the ministry of encouragement and giving people hope. It's called ministry of ex exhortation. You are a Barnabas. You encourage people. With the shopping, clothes here. Eh? You visit them in their homes, in the hospital as well. You are an encouragement. Go to homes or prison, in church, you know how to encourage a pastor's shopping. Because not everybody shops for a pastor. There are people whom God will give a burden. Shop for pastor's house. Not everybody shops for a pastor's house. So it is a ministry called exhortation. Encouragement. Barnabas operated in that ministry. So he was an apostle. But his, his, demonst his demonstration, manifestation in that gifting was an encouragement. You bring money for us. You, you bring money. You, take, you sell something. You bring money to church for a project. That's a ministry. 
Ministry of Finance. You are a financier of the gospel. So you exploit anointing. You are anointing in that area. As long as you are faithful, you are taught to be faithful in your dimension of gifting. All the other parts of your life will be okay. Marriage, children, huh? all the other stuff. They're just like everything just gets fine. Why? Because you're oiling them. How are you oiling them? You are operating faithfully with the gifts of the Holy Ghost you are given. So you are placement in the body of Christ. You are a minister of praise and worship. Someone, hallelujah. You are a minister. So you are ministers, each one, worshiping and praising God. So you are a minister there. So whom are you worshiping? God. What is the work of a minister? God uses you to lift people's faith. God uses you to create an atmosphere for others to worship. God uses you to pull those who are down. Pull them up. Pull them up. Pull them up. You pull people upwards with your gifts in your ministry of praise and worship. People come, they are downcast. So that's where your gifting is. They come gloomy, but when you worship, you praise, you dance with them, they, like, they see the smiles on your face. They see the smile on your face. You keep smiling and you praise God. You smile and you are jumping for Jesus. So even those who are gloomy and tired, they get themselves into jumping. They're jumping. So they keep trying. Eventually they'll be jumping. They forget their sorrows. God uses you to drive away their sorrows. Wipe away their tears. To remove wrinkles on their faces. And... Uh, also remove weight on their shoulders, heaviness that has been upon them. So maybe you are a worshiper in that department. You are a minister and that's where you draw anointing that helps you in business, keeps you in marriage, keeps you in a career, keeps you as a farmer or in your entrepreneurship. Someone get understanding in Jesus' name. Someone get wisdom in Jesus' name. But look at fools. They belittle the place of drawing anointing. Then they want to imagine they'll manifest in the marketplace. You manifest with water, you manifest with petrol. What will you use to manifest? We manifest with the oil, the anointing that we draw. And you must be knowledgeable to position yourself so that you tap into the anointing. So David knows this one. So he writes to us in Psalms 92. Verse number 13, it says, And them that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts. So Psalms 92, verse 13. So David writes and says, And those that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of God. Now, the word planting connotes your placement. What do you do in the body of Christ? Now, you are being planted but qualifies you receiving anointing because God doesn't have anointing for waste. So, if you are just one that uh, in the body of Christ you are just like a, you are just there. You are not planted. You are just hovering. You hover, hover. You just hover, hover. You, you hover here. You hover there. You just hover, hovering. 
you behave like a mermaid. You know, mermaid hoovers. The dog, yeah. They just hoover. Mermaids are never planted. They just hoover, 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 hoover. In the house of God, David learned. So much that he says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. I would rather be a doorkeeper than miss heaven at all. Same David writes to us about being planted. No, being planted now, being planted connotes you having been designated an assignment in line with your gifting. You've been assigned responsibility to minister depending on your anointing. Depending on your gifting. Depending on your being gifted. So in the body of Christ, there is a placement. That being placed, that being assigned, responsibility is what Psalms 93 verse, uh, Psalms 92 verse 13 means. You are planted in the house of God. Maybe you are a worshiper. You are an usher. You are in charge of security. You serve in media. You serve as an instrumentalist. You serve as a keyboardist. Camera mixing. You control the chat on YouTube. You are an admin in the church walls or platforms or subgroups. You are a cell group pastor, Sunday school teacher. You are a watchman. You are a, a security personnel. You are a toilet cleaner. You are a, it, you are a, you are a cook. You are in charge of protocol. You are one that is gifted eh, with de deco, decorating the altar. Do you know that as a ministry? How someone let's try to do this. This is a ministry. Decorating these ones. Now you're looking at the camera and I want you to show people. Some people don't know what I'm saying. These ones. This is deco. Coloring. Signing colors. How they flow. These ones. On a spirit. Making the church look beautiful. Those curtains along the walls. Plus what is behind me. This work. Persons who do them. Are gifted. Those who wash them. Clean them. That's their ministry. Those working on the speakers. Those working on our sound, they are gifted. That's where they are planted. You draw benefit because of your placement in the vineyard. Feeding Sunday school, hospitality, feeding people. There are those who draw water for cleaning. I see our young people draw water. They fill our tanks, our water reservoir. Those ones who deal with electricity, wiring in church, checking if our gadgets are fine. That is ministry. Now, the place of your ministry, that ministration is the gateway for your tapping anointing. So you tap anointing. Via your giftings. 
So anointing is commanded. So you tap into that anointing because your position you serve. So actually will say unategeanga mafuta. Unategea mafuta ama unatega mafuta. Jinsi ya huduma yako. But why, why, are, why are we so foolish? So much that hata katikati ya wiki watu hawako, they come on Sunday. Then they want anointing. Anointing umefanya nini? Well, there is corporate anointing that comes upon us. <laughs> That's for refreshing you. And you know, dimensions of anointing help us fulfill destiny. Now, there is this dimension of anointing that teaches you that you need to position yourself to tap into the richness of God so that you fulfill destiny. Your lack of knowledge is because you don't regard anointing. When as a minister, you lazy in your ministry, you come casually to church. You come late for the service and you're a minister. You put on poorly. Then you want to represent God. I am the Lord representative. Even the devil can send you away. Who, whom are you representing? I represent Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The only one. The begotten son of God. Satan will say, hey! Fake. Because how you package yourself, you don't look like uh, an ambassador of Christ Jesus. Now, our, our poor packaging and our poor presentation is because we don't have anointing. Not that anointing is not there. Anointing is there. But you have not exploited that anointing. So, before exploiting the anointing, we position ourselves for that anointing. We make capacity. We make room. We create room for anointing. Please, anointing, you must make room for it. Mafuta mutu ifanyia nafasi. Imagine upako ni mutu. Imagine anointing is God. Where will he sit in your life? You must make room for the anointing. That room is in your life. And that's what we do. When we disposition ourselves into fasting and praying and Bible searching, Bible study, Bible devotion, Bible research, Bible digging. One of the gifts that, uh, I mean, uh, actually is a privilege. I was privileged. I, I sought God of the Bible. And that's how my journey to study the Bible led me into discovering that uh, we have over I mean, uh, I don't know if they, anything has increased, but we, are, we have over 1,000 versions of the Bible. I wouldn't have known if I wasn't interacting with the Bible. Today, uh, I mean, uh, today there are versions close to one, over 1,000, close to 1,500 versions of the Bible. I've interacted with various versions of the Bible. Some I have them uh, online. Others I have them manually. And I'm just like, even this one, some of their names are even funny. Because I want to know, what is the meaning? Uh, I don't get a proper interpretation of the Bible from this version. Can I have another version? Can I try another version? Until I settle for a real meaning. So that's how I got myself into studying Hebrew and Greek. 
please, just a little. Just a little to help me be able to get to know some things. So don't tell me now you can go live in Israel. No, I can't live in Israel because I don't understand you. Uh, I can't speak. I can't speak Hebrew. And I can't speak uh, those dialects. Zao Aramaic. So Bible was written in those languages: Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek. Portions of the Bible are written in Latin. I studied the word, so I took it to studying the word. Then God uh, honored me with having a Bible in my heart. It is a gift, but it is an honor because I used to study Bible. So uh, in the vision of the Lord, I was given a Bible in my heart. So that if we lose Bibles on earth, I'll use the Bible in my heart. Someone, hallelujah. Bible says we hide the word. I had been hiding this word in my heart. Hiding it in my heart. Until at some point God also gave me his Bible. Inside my heart. So I have a Bible. In my heart. That is as a prophet. So the things we speak. God sees. He doesn't just give you a gift. There is a laboring. He doesn't just privilege you some privileges. So you read the Bible. There are things God will do for you. And that way, I started attracting anointing. Anointing. I will read 30 chapters of the Bible in one day. Then I'll be like, I have to do something else. I have to do something else. But again, I have to squeeze myself to make sure that before I do anything, when the day begins, I've come through the Bible. If I don't have enough of it, when my wife and my children disappear from the house because they have things to pursue, I also get quickly into. But remember, I also had some business to do. I had some writings because I'm a writer. I had to author. I have to write. I had to give counsel because I used to give counsel to people, written counsel. I was also like employed as a think tank. People contract me as a thinking tank. So being a think tank, you think and you think and you think and you think and you study the Bible. Then you write them, uh, you write them wisdom on how to prosper their churches. You give counsel to a bishop. You write for them this and this and this. This is how God wants it. Anytime I'll get... Um, Prophecies, prophecies before I started going on air. I'll write proper prophecies as a document. Then you write a business project. I'll write prophecies. <laughs> no wisdom, I'll write it like a project. Then give bishops for the church. It's not for, I mean, it will be for everybody. It is specific if God tells me for that one. And again, I still have to study the Bible. I'll have to take chapters. Five chapters, ten chapters, twenty chapters, sometimes the entire New Testament, then thirty chapters of the Bible. God help me memorize the scriptures. That's a function of the anointing. Someone say, Apostle, lay hands on me so that I can memorize scriptures the way you do. Please stop your madness. There is no laying on of hands so that uh, scriptures remove, get themselves from the Bible and then they get into your head. Please take the Bible, read the Bible, study the Bible, study the Bible, study it over and over. Then you'll be like getting into memorizing the scriptures. The Bible says, hmm, of the Bereans, that should be Acts 17, verse number 11, that they. Hallelujah. They were regarded as more noble than the Thessalonians in the sense that they studied the Bible, they studied the scriptures with the aim of proving and confirming as to whether those things that were taught were true. Hallelujah. So they were more noble. Than the 
than the Thessalonians. Is that not so? Acts 17, 11. So what do we see there? They gave themselves to study. Do you have people who do so today? The Bible says these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And they searched the scriptures daily. With the, eh, with the aim of confirming whether those things were so. You see how people who after have preached, they go back and study the Bible to confirm, to prove. Eh, to ascertain whether I preached correctly. So the Bereans were different. Now such are the ones that can operate with the anointing. So I, I will study the scriptures. I will study scriptures. I will study scriptures. And that's how God helped me to become a student of the word. So I became a student of the Logos. And then the Holy Ghost will help me in the Rema. And I, I, I was gifted to understand Rema. Today many Christians want anointing. <laughs> But they want to read news, they want to read uh, WhatsApp, man. They want to be a YouTuber all the time. They're like, hey, what's up? Oh, what's up? No wonder the guy who came up with WhatsApp. I was like, uh, because people have been talking, what's up, man? What's up, woman? Oh, what's up? What's up? So I said, okay, give them WhatsApp. Please, WhatsApp can never take you to heaven. WhatsApp can never give you revelation. WhatsApp can never give you understanding. It is us to give WhatsApp fodder for people. Hallelujah. Yeah, you give them fodder. So, uh, studying the Bible, God gifted me giftings. So, my teaching gift. Enables me to tap anointing that enables me in other dimensions of my destiny fulfillment. So I tap anointing through my the gift of a teacher. So I labor on my gifts. I buy Bibles. I study the book. I look dictionaries. I search various dictionaries. I look at the original maps. Where was Galilea? Where is Capernaum? How many kilometers? So when Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter number 5, that should be Luke chapter 5 or John chapter 5 as well. He healed a man that was leprous. Jesus commanded the man, go and show yourself to the priest. Now that should be Luke Chapter 5. And also, you'll find the same also recorded in Matthew. So, having healed them, tell it go. Yeah? So, if it's Matthew, it is chapter 8. If it's Luke, it should be chapter 5. The same story Jesus heals. Um, so, if you're looking at Luke chapter 5, you see. Verse number 12. So what do we see there? Jesus heals a man that is leprous. And tells the man, don't show yourself to anybody. Unless you first do what? You go show yourself to a priest. So chapter 5, verses number 12 of 
maybe to verse number number 15 or number 14 verse 12 says and it came to pass when he was in a certain city that is Jesus behold a man full of leprosy who seen Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying lord if thou wilt thou can make me clean verse 13 the bible records and he put forth his hand and touched him saying i am i will be thou clean and immediately the leprosy departed from him verse 14 records and he charged him that is jesus charged the leprous man tell no man but go and show yourself to the priests and offer for you are cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went um, there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Now do you know that um, verse number 12 to verse number 14 is Depicting a story that covers something like 150 kilometers. How did I know? I took to getting to understand that uh, in study of the Bible and confirming some things, you need a map. So there's a geography we need to have in our studying the Bible. So that's why there are Bibles that have got a map. So I just like, okay, so not, not just Bibles. There are Bibles that have got maps behind them. So I'm just like, hey. Then there are Bibles that have got a concordance behind them. I say, uh-huh. So you look at the scale. Palestine, there is a scale. Mediterranean, there is a scale. Ancient Eastern religion, there is a scale. There are rivers. There are mountains. Then there are alphabetical. There are indexes of subjects. There are uh, chronology of events. So I took to study and get to know. At the point Jesus healed this man. And the point that the man went to show himself to the priest was over 100 kilometers. Normally, it will, have been a two, it will be a four days walk if you're using an ass. If you're trekking on your foot, eh? fast enough, that will be four days. Ordinarily, that will have taken two weeks. Then I measured, I discovered that the distance there According to the old days, now Israel, those, um, those uh, old parts have been uh, tampered with today, their buildings. But at the time, Jesus commanded the leprous man between right from Galilee to Jerusalem. Because priests will only be in the temple at Jerusalem. And only priests will give you a license that now you are healed. You are no longer leprous. Go and leave the society. And the priest will actually clear you because you have offered sacrifices. In, uh, in agreement with the laws of Moses. Only the priest will tell you, remove your shirt, remove your trouser. Then it'll be like inspect you, like ins- they inspect a cow or a livestock, inspect you. Fanya Ivi. Fanya Ivi. Fanya Ivi. Good. Lokri Alela. Geuka. Ilo Kori. You turn your back and on a kwamba. On my pony, you're going to Then he writes, Bring your offering now. Love Nata. Nata Njiwa. That's a dove. Because he was a poor fellow. And uh, the stuff that he had. Then he clears the man, you are clean. Go and leave the society. How did I know that one? I searched in the scriptures. 
So I know there are Bibles with a map for you to use. Today, if you don't be labor and labor in the Bible to know facts, and then you also endear yourself in the spirit to know stuff by the Holy Ghost, you will not be a good teacher of the Bible. And then you want anointing. Uh, look at our ministry, uh, some gospel singers. Our, maybe, let me not go far, maybe our own. You want to sing and kill a man on Angalianga. You can imagine the Angalia in our Kimba. That's why I say you don't want to hear anyone sing Christina Shusho's um, uh, songs on this altar. Because they have bad impartation. So why would you want to copy someone singing? So you sit yourself, believe God, download songs, then sing them. Because there are people, if you keep singing for them, Christina Shusho, they know Christina Shusho, they see her songs everywhere, they hear her songs everywhere, they have the album, then you sing it, there's no power you're downloading. So you need anointing. When you get into Fasting, you seek in God. You are making room for more of Him than you store it in that room. I've studied the scriptures while on a fasting. Study the book when you're fasting. You tap into one. When the anointing is released, you tap, you connect, you tap, you connect using your gift. So, my children need to be in school. My wife needs to be well. Uh, things around me need to be in order. I need to fulfill destiny without troubles. Where do I tap the anointing from? And how? By my gift and my positioning in the body of Christ. What teaches me that anointing I tap will teach me how to preach, how to teach what to do, what to say, how to operate. The same anointing, the overflow of that anointing teaches me finances, what to buy, what not to buy, where to go, not where not to go, things to do, what not to do, what to teach, what to say. The anointing teaches me all things, that, but there must be a gateway for that anointing. There must be a gateway. There must be a gateway. There must be an inlet. There must be a door of that anointing coming into your life. You tap. That door is your gift. Your positioning. So your gift positions you. So you are taught with that anointing on how to fulfill destiny. Someone, hallelujah. Second, First John two twenty seven. By now you have memorized it. By now we have memorized second. Uh, I mean First John chapter two, verse number twenty seven. But the anointing which you have received of Him, that is Jesus, in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Because the things anointing will teach you. Of course, through a vessel. You don't need another man to teach you. Bible says that anointing. Huh? But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. And is truth. That is, it is truth. And is no lie. Even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. So being taught all things. Today, many, many will have been workers in the body of Christ. They have become wanderers. They wander after every man of God. 
yet ni intercessor. They wonder after every man of God, yet they are prophetesses or a prophet. They are wondering after every man of God because a man of God is anointed. So you are a gifted soul. You should be serving, but look, you're wondering. You wouldn't have wondered if at all the anointing you have tapped will have schooled you, will have taught you things. Now you find people, when you wonder after some certain persons, they steal your gift. They chalk your gift. They blind your spiritual eyes. Other, uh, others get to be afflicted so that in the things of the spirits they are deaf. Some become damp because Satan won't tolerate a gifted Christian. Others are hijacked their giftings. They lose what they have. Then Satan exchange and gives them what is counterfeit. Okay, how did you get yourself there? You got yourself there because you did not make room for anointing in your life. But you have enough time and resources to keep wandering, following, chasing after persons who purport to have anointing. In so doing, you fell into a trap. But if you had taken a time to wait on God and be instructed while you're fasting, reading the scriptures like I've instructed people, wait on God on fasting. So that Isaiah 58, you tap into that anointing. You wouldn't have gotten yourself exposed and be vulnerable to be attacked by the enemy. So when we refuse to pray, fast, wait on God, study scriptures, eh? we find that one very hard, taking our time, it waste our time, we want things that are easy. We want things that are easy. I have bad news for you. Anointing never comes easy. It never came for Jesus. It will never come for you. Jesus spent his time, not once, in the wilderness. Now, you don't have a wilderness to go. But you can afford a week to fast in your house. Because nowadays also I don't trust many prayer mountains. You can trust your own house. And uh, while children have gone to school and your husband has gone to work or your spouse has gone to work, you, you seclude yourself to pray and study the scriptures and you're like, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking for now. No pleasure, no this and the other. I'm waiting on God. You're like, God, I'm waiting. God, I'm waiting. God, I'm waiting. Lord, I'm waiting. My God, I'm waiting. You are waiting and you are praying and you are searching the scriptures as well. You are making room for anointing. You tap. That anointing you tap into. Not only will it help you to manifest your giftings, but also will help you in your general contention for destiny. General. And all round. Because God is not unfair to say, okay, I give you anointing for you to manifest in the giftings, but I deny you anointing for you to become a businessman. No. Now you see why many Christians are failures. Not all of us were meant to be sitting every Sunday service. Some are meant to be serving alongside me serving. Not all of us have ministries to serve on Sunday. Some need to serve midweek. 
So, in, uh, because today we are focusing on ministry gifts. People who don't, who are not schooled with the anointing, will not use, um, will not really uh, be effectual with their ministry giftings. Well, this is a wide subject, but um, maybe just a glimpse to, just a glimpse of um, 1 Corinthians 12 and verses number number 4. Now verse number 1 for that matter says Now concerning spiritual gifts brethren, I will not have you ignorant. God does not, cannot afford to have us be ignorant. That means in matters spiritual gifts, it is expected that you be knowledgeable. Mambo na karama za roho imetarajiwa kwamba wewe uwe na ufahamu. Then he says in verses number 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit you are expected to know. You are expected to know that um, there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. If you meet a Jew, you are not a man of power. Basi panazo tofauti za karama bali roho ni yeye yule. That should save you uh, being deceived or fighting others anyhow. And there are differences of administrations, but that same, same spirit and same Lord. And there are differences of administrations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Verse number five, I repeat, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, Tulia Sema, Tari Watano, Kwamba Tena Panatofauti za Huduma, Nabwana, Nyeye Yule. Why? So that you know your line. You know your territory. Usikanyagi we wa Huduma wengine. You don't trample on other people's gifts. You don't strive. You don't compete. You don't hinder other persons when they are using their gifts. So understand that there are differences of administrations, but you serve the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Diversities of operations, but uh, Within the same God, same vineyard, eh? working all of us in God. So, I say, Maji, Kisha Panatafaoti is a kutenda kazi, Bali Mungu ni yeye yule, as it tendai kazi zote, katika wote. Now, that will afford us uh, to be humble. You don't compete. Hallelujah. Now, have you ever seen these mistakes some people make? I don't know. Uh, in cell groups, kwanza kwa cell group, kwanza butu kwa chache. So it comes to singing, some people want to sing loud. They sing the loudest kwa cell group. Then even of a shadow, mwanya nangweza wimbo. Then when it comes to mwanya wana wambra katifu, watu naza wamba kwa roho, people are praying in tongues. Uh, then you find that the convener who is the moderator? Anamezo hata sikiki. Mana kuna kamutu kakona roho. Kanaenda zaidi juu mpaka ceiling. Paka una. You are like you unafanya wengine paka wa sikiki. I say this one. Ni roho ujafundishika. Because we are allowed to have more. You, you, you learn to be moderate. This is a setting. When you are like, you speak in tongues, but your ears are as well as when the moderator at a semaji. 
So you don't go higher above others. You're like, if you're, if you're too, you're in a cell group. It's a setting. Ni wimbo. So unapata wengine wanashindana sauti ya wimbo. Unaharibia wengine. Now, such things, sisi kukukaisha kwa darasa kufundisha ni ngumu sana. Because we don't fundisha the Holy Ghost. But you know what? The unction, who is the Holy Spirit from the Holy One, will teach you all things. Will teach you everything. You're like, I'm taught of the Holy Ghost. Let me be modest a little bit here. So that is, you are in the Spirit, but you are still also being controlled by the Spirit. You are still led by the Spirit. I'm not saying that now. Apostles say that when it reaches this way, I should be like this. Please, this is not what Apostle saying. Tap into the anointing. Allow the anointing to teach you. Even that will also help our camera crew. When do I take what move? And which move do I take? How do I go? Where do I cross? What time? That one, you are taught by the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, it will be a cameraman that is stupid. You are taught in the Holy Ghost. You are a camera crew. You just like, hmm? you are like, the Holy Ghost tells you, here, go like this. Here, move there. You are taught in the anointing. The anointing teaches you what steps to take. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you keep making mistakes in ministry, you keep on stamping, I mean, stamping on other people's, uh, you trample on other people, you step on other people's feet, you grieve other people's in their service, chances are you are not taught in the spirit. You need anointing. If you compete with other gifted people in church, you compete in tongues, you compete in uh, prophecies, you compete also in visions, you are competing in singing, you compete to do one another. It is because you are not taught in the anointing. You feel insecure when we have gifts we shouldn't feel insecure because gifts are intended to complement one another. Gifts are not parallel. Gifts complement. Hallelujah. Gifts of the spirit, unless it is another spirit. Unless it is another spirit. If it is another spirit, there will be competition. But if it be the spirit of God, that you share gifts, you will not compete, but you will you'll just end up complementing. Complementing means you converge your giftings into working what is common, building the body of Christ. Look at those who are not educated in the anointing. They'll be using their gifts to outshine one another. Now, Jesus tells us in Second um, in uh, Philippians, I mean, uh, Apostle Paul writes to us in Philippians chapter two, verse number five, that uh, consider Jesus. He did not compete. He did not rival the Father. He did not rival the Holy Ghost even though he knew that he was God. Okay, I'll paraphrase for you. I'll paraphrase for you. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. So, Apostle Paul tells us about Jesus. That Jesus knew that he was God. Even though on earth he was man, he took the form of man. Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself 
of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has ex highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name. That at the mention, eh? that at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, summary. Jesus did not compete with the Father. And Jesus never competed with the Holy Ghost. There was no contest. So how many in church are in a contest? The gifted, you're competing. When you go get yourself into such spiritual mistakes, you frustrate destiny. Anointing will leak. Chances will be that uh, there are persons that uh, are operating another anointing. Another anointing that isn't God's. Which of course will frustrate the work of Jesus. Why would you want to, to, to fight another intercessor and you are the intercessor? Why do you compete with your fellow worshiper and you are worshiping the same God? Why do you want to frustrate someone's gift yet all of us should be serving the same kingdom? Why will you be jealous at another gifted with his gifts yet you are in the same church in the same team serving the same God benefiting the same body of Jesus? Question mark. Which anointing are you operating? Who is your God? So if you carry anointing of God, then the anointing will teach you things. Will teach you humility. Will teach you team building. Will teach you working in unity. Will teach you synergy. You work in, to in togetherness. Synergy. Anointing will teach you that you need to regard others better than yourself. And be, I, you know, why you kimba? Una imanga vizu ndo napata momentum. Please, we enda iba kwanza, weka madhabao, ipate moto, alafu mimi naeza kuja badai. So that when you are pampered and flattered, you say, I ah, know. I'm not the one going first. Please, you go first, then I'll come when you are done. You give others opportunity. When you cling and hold on to something so much that even when you are dying, you hold on to it. You are not anointed the right anointing. You are not anointed. Jesus said, can't you think of others that they can do better than yourself? Come as it you can answer what end ambali. Kama si imbi. Sidani kama worship ita amuka. Lazima mindo ni imbe ni anzishe. Mi, 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 mi. Ha. Auna mafuta. That, that you cannot make room for another. That you always look at others. Ah, wa wezi. I just have to be there. Unless But you must learn to be alone. Now, what is the Number two, you must allow other gifts to complement your gift. I bring, I come this way, that one comes this way. 
When we meet, we form something looking like this. Persons who fight other gifts frustrate the work of God. The gifted fighting the gifted are foolish. What when you have a power, na karama, zaro, bao wana piga wenza, when you karama na vi power, zaro, wana ujumu kazi ya Christo Yesu. Why should that happen? Wana kata kufundishika na mafuta. When you take your time to pray and fast, you know kama kiburi chake na kato katua, those of us who are so proud, just get into fasting. Kau kumbaka munga kutengeneze. Utaondoka kama unasikia. Nitaubiri kweli. Maana katika saumu na mfungo pale, ndiyo tunashugulikiwa vitu vingine. Your old Adam nature dies na ujinga wake na kiburi chake. Christians who don't fast. Kambia wei kama si yesu nda kupitneza kukua. Kama si tu wakovu nge kumaliza. Please uyo mutu bado. <laughs> Taka naenda kufe kwa jangwa. Kama una. Kuna watu kikose na wangalia tu. If you have nothing to say just. Kambia nyasaye. Umawana vile nimefanywa. Unawachia mungu. Mano umefunga chakulote piga na nani. When you've been fasting you're fasting. Where do you get strength to fight? Physical battles. Your body is weak. Ata mudomo hauna. Can you imagine umefunga 40 days alafu wakirusha, unarusha. Kumbafu wewe. <laughs> wewe pia nasema. Eh? Ata na wewe kumbafu. Please. Huko na stock ya matusi. Nene. Janeko. Wewe pia una, una, unatafuta ingine. Natawa matusi kama mchungaji wa ngombe. Ya kuwathi. Unarusha kurusha. Please. Ingia fasting. Alafu nda kuja hapa sema. Rima mama mama mama. Wewe wacha kutudanganya. If you be given to fasting. Unaka kwa biblia. Na unafanya saumu. Kiburi chako inaishanga. Ata maneno. Do you know you can fast until when you want to go praying? I, you are like, I don't have words. So such moments you just sing a song. Because not all the time when you are fasting you can pray. Sometimes when you fast, you are so dry. Auna vocabulary ya maombi. Sama mungu. Wimba tunaza kuimba. Natamani kufana na na wewe. You know in that song you also pray. Natamani kufana na na wewe. Siku zote za maisha yangu. So you wake up. Sometimes you have you are like, how do I start praying? And so you're like, okay, God. Nasia to nyimros nashuka. If you be sensitive and you are learned or you are schooled by anointing. Sometimes you wake up, you don't pray. You can wake up, you sing. Inakwambia, please gear hii ingi, please ni saya kuimba. You sing. You worship God alone. Remember those years will be like I'll worship, I'll worship in the morning a lot of worship songs. Then I was given to understand at that time I had 5,000 songs in my stomach. confidence I have niko na a drum of songs. Niko na pipa ya nyimbo. And I will just sing. Because you worship like 50 songs. Zinafuatana tu zinakatika unaza ingine. Yani there are 50. You sing and sing and sing. Ukenda kwa cho unaimba. Uenda kwa bathroom unaimba. Uko bedroom unaimba. Yani you are just singing paka kwa barabara. 
And so nikagundua kwamba mm, kupanda matatu sitaki when I want to come to church nakata hiyo barabara nakata kwa vichaka naimba tu peke yangu naimba nikiimba and those are days ndikuwa niko I was the only pastor on the mountain yeah, I was the cleaner wa church Ah mimi napanga viketi nikisha maliza na naoga tena tena nakaa nione watu nataka kukuja na tembea tu na you know those are almost uh, 10 kilometers unapita kwa mtoni mali hakuna watu unamaliza tena unatembea ukienda ama unakuja kutembea lakini jioni unapanda gari i will need time to sing so mambo na vipawa if you have understanding of gifts you no know frustrate other gifts unapozima wengine wasitabiri na nyinyi wote ni manabii pamoja unazima yeye please wewe ni kain you are a kain you know honorable mtu ameza kutabiri riki riki na anaanza kumzima yeye akijaji work wewe ni mchawi you are a witch the only tongues we can shut in the house of god they are tongues that brings confusion maybe a prophet or someone feels anafanya toba zake za binafsi za kutubu na tunaweza zima yeye kwa ajili toba yake inaweza tafsiriwa na mtu mimi nimefanya toba maana nilala na jirani huyo jirani anaitwa baba na nina na ni nikalala na yeye siku ile tena siku hiyo nyingine nikalala na huyu mwingine ninataja jina yake mbele zako Mungu ninaomba nisamehewe unazisema kwa ndimi kuna watu nasomanga ndimi those are tongues for repentance so if they may bring confusion katikati ya kanisa mimi kama mteule wa Bwana na naelewa nimekusikia ni toba Naambiana aingie wave length nyingine. Bado utafanya toba hiyo lakini utapiga watu kelele. So I know ule nda kusondeka kwa kwa ibada. So that na kuzima kidogo tu na kuzima. Wewe ni kama radio, napunguza volume yako hivi. Now that one naifanya kwa mamlaka yangu. Sio kuharibu ibada. Na siharibi ule toba. Maana kuna watu wengine kanisani wako na karama za kutafsiri so there are people in church who are gifted they can actually interpret your tongues and they are like hey eh hey. so we don't learn na baba joni eh so we le mimba le mtoto wako maana saa toba you are open before god mimi hata huyo mtoto baya aliyekuwa wafu na, na bishop huyo mtoto ni wangu lakini watoji mungu ni samehe nafanya kutubu mbele za bwana and unaifanya in tongues people who are gifted in the tongues of the holy ghost with the interpretation of tongues watashika wanasema nini sema ha so ndaka na pastor mwenye kipawa vizuri asikie eh chenye unasema kwa ndimi tunakusaidia nyasai volume volume ugol volume so that unajipata peke yako naongea volume yako ya chini devil worshipers wakikuja kanisani wana mandimi zao maraza za Jezebel wako na tongues Yes, the Belix priests have tongues. False prophets have got tongues as well. So they can confuse others in church. So when we pick that kind of tongue, hizo tunazima na ulimi wako tunashika kiroho, tunangoa yote. Na ulimi ni mrefu tunaitoa pu. Na itupa huko na kuikatakata, hautaongea ndimi tena. That's the danger ya watu ambao ni wabudu mashetani unatumwa kwa ma, eh, kwa uh, kwa mikutano za injili ambako tuna power ukikuja tutakusiaga unless god wants you to be delivered so you see how wengine when you suffer frustrating gifts unazima wengine have power unazima wengine una be unasema na wapiga na upofu sitaki dada fulani animulike e, natangaza kwamba mashaka itaniona haitaniona tena wewe si uache kanisa wende mali penye hutaonekana on this altar tunarushisha vipawa zote wenye macho za kinabii waonane haleluya hata mimi niwahi kuona asimuje lenda kulala kisumu I went to preach I was preaching to at YMCA I was invited there to preach 
Then I didn't have a place to spend because YMCA facilities palace in Meoza. So I went to spend somewhere as a, as a, a lodging. And I think I only had 500 shillings to spare. And uh, 500 in a city like Kisumu can only put in a third class or fourth class or sixth class guest uh, lodging. So I was lodging, some fellows were having sex in the other room. Someone uh, was having sex and they are chewing the, the smoking bangi, marijuana, and uh, sniffing. Hmm? Uh, the other room, someone was having rendezvous of love. And just like God, will I, will I preach? I did not sleep. Senior sigh. You feel like cursing people to die. Here is a preacher who should. I felt filthy. Now, here at home, someone saw me in the, in the night, one of the prophetess. I saw, I saw this one. I saw you in a place when you could not to a sherati, weighing you when I find your sherati, and I saw you there, Katikatiao. Hey, say, that one was true. You saw me, but you didn't see me sleeping with any of them. At your partner, yes, you saw me well. <laughs> what happened? You come and let a cool beer, Malini Melala, Lily Jeribu Kulala, Malipenye, Nilala Malipenye, what on a funny name, a pains in it was a lodging. We are not Imagine you call I'm going to We are not supposed to see my manabi. No matter who we are one. In fact, not to make one check. We keep tembe on a kongo juo kambi. Hey, manabi me on a kuangalia. So that's what they asked me. Now manabi me and a kitu on angalia ngavile ni metembe. I'm be a pastor. The Leona you funo. Those here live like in the Leona. I'm to come away. Katikali I say, oh. And then, you know what? This one, it looks even, even, even more of I am an abi wabaya. I'm out to kill every buyer. Natanga za upofu, dada Susan nakupofusha. Na mji wa nisawa na askari mwenye kuna bunduki ya napiga askari mazaki bunduki. Risa sayi takata kutoka. At because you are firing your bullet at a fellow police officer who also has a gun like you. That will not stop the bullet from being fired. You can fire and kill. Friendly fire. But such mistakes we make because we aren't taught in the anointing. One is as freeway. And so that is why Corinthians, I mean, Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 12 verses number uh, 6 will tell us and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who worketh all in all. So we need to know that all of us, we are working with the same God, for the same God, and his power worketh through all of us, depending on how we apportion as the power. Verse 7 says, But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, come at the initial Zaroho. Imepeano kwa kila mutu. Kwa ajili ya kufaidiana. Unafaidi mutu, na hea na kufaidi. Unafaidi mutu mwenye kipawa, hei pia na kufaidi. Hivyo sote vipawa zetu, zime kusudio kufaidiana. That's why kuna watu na vipawa, karama, amazo vipawa zao, zina mfanyiko wa migu yao. Wengine mfanyiko za mikono. Wengine wetu mfanyiko za vipawa za dihirika, kupitia midomo. Wengine ni masho, wengine ni masikio. Dihirisho. So if you hear someone's mouth, I don't like when that woman speak tongues. Tongues, 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 tongues. Huh? Which tongues are those? Na kuambia ukianza barabara hiyo, utakauka roho. Sabu huyo, anajidhirisha ndimi zake kwa modomo. But there are some when they are, they are manifesting their spirit. You will find them doing something like, Ukiaza sema tutaki wakorino hapa. Good. Utazima roho. 
There are those ones when they are prophesying. They'll be prophesying with one leg and one finger and they're doing this, but they're prophesying. And they're dancing and prophesying. They're jumping. They go on one feet, one leg. What kind of around? Ukianza kuwacheko seme Mr. Kiu Mandewazimu. Utazima. Have you, seen, have you ever seen some prophets when they are prophesying, when the power comes upon them, they do something like this. That is their angle. Masikio na mudomo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Have you seen some that are doing like this? Selena Troy na kujo nana nafanya. Kidole kwa masikio. Ama na jikuna kuna sema i i wapi masikio i don't make fun of them. Ah, hallelujah. Yeah, Sam, <laughs> kikuja, unasikia, ni kama wale wadada ambazo siku zao wanajua inakuanga. Ngada ya ngada. Please, ni ujumbe inakuja. Muwechikai ni kama ndaga kuza. Ah, Please, we say we are sasa to suffer with the Nazima vitu kama iyo ni show. We talk about Nazima raw. Some behave like warriors in church. Hey, kila mahali, kila mahali. Wakianza fanya hivyo, hey, please watch our fanya zao, watch our fanya zao, watch our fanya zao. What you don't so, if umefundishika katika roho, the anointing of God has taught you, you will have restraint. Hallelujah. So, elewa kwamba karama zote za roho, all the gifts of the spirit they are meant to profit every man plus yourself. So for one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. You need to be taught in the anointing. The anointing will teach you when do you speak the word of wisdom? When do you speak the word of knowledge? The timing, then you gauge also the audience maybe. Word of wisdom. The word of knowledge. By the same spirit. So you can't be like when I'm preaching I'll teach you, hey, hey, ba, 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 ba. Apostle, ngoja kwanza bwana asema hivi na hivi. God is a God of order. So the anointing will teach you when do you say it. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits. So if you are taught in the anointing, you can design. So I'm informed. So when I prayed for me, I always sometimes na patiwa kujua what I'm going to do na marozingine. So I just know how to operate when I preach. Like in in our shikia to hapa. What a camp a kamasa flat ni malize. Then to taonana bada ibada. Now, why, how, why do I do so? I am taught by the anointing. What do I do and what time do I do it? To another working of miracles, to another prophecy. The working of miracles, the anointing will teach me. And afanya sahi amangoja kwanza. Hallelujah. Then to another designing of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues. Hmm? To, a, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But verse number 11, but all this worketh that one and the same uh, self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. So, God devised for us. So, why would we want to be jealous of someone? 
Nisawa na daktari wa meno, naonea daktari wa, wa mifupa wivu. Daktari uh, wa macho, naonea wivu. Uh, daktari wa, wa, wa nini? Daktari wa ngozi. Daktari wa ngozi, naonea wivu. Eh? Uh, daktari wa... Maybe wa moyo. Mana daktari wa pindane mana ule wa moyo, wende kawa kimaliziwa, wewe pia ndakana usaideni u daktari, mambo na ngozi. So you find that concern. Kuna watu, when you start frustrating other people's gifts, bas, you start frustrating your own destiny. Unaza kukata mafuta yako, mbae nge kufa wewe kutimiza hatima. Hapo nasikia ngamuta majiroga. Jule mafuta mwenye unakanyagia mafuta yake. Mafuta yake ngekuja kuna mali na kufaidi. So unajikanyagia mafuta. So our giftings and our callings we sabotage the work of God because we are ignorant. When what a camera you munangazozana is because ni anointing of jafundishika. So unaonea mweza kuhivu. Unaonea mweza kukijicho. You feel threatened. Many times, it will be because you are not learned, you are not schooled in the anointing. And that's why, what na kuwa na what we call corporate fasting. Corporate fasting, the whole church, all prophets, all workers, they enter into fasting, individual prayers, also corporate prayers. So that we are strengthened corporate. Then everybody, you are stirred up in your gift individually. You are given eyes to see, ears to hear, eh? hands to fight, and feet eh? for dominion. You know, pata watu mbao, kiono na ngana na wanaribia wengine, ni ujinga. Kanisani ya tunanga vita adhidi ya mwingine. We fight a common battle. Defeat the enemy. Let us all be strong for the kingdom. Someone, hallelujah. Gifts and calling. So, pole pole, wakati unatumia haujafundishika kwa vipawa zako, ujafundishika kwa nini, ujafundishika na roo mtakatifu, yani upako haujafundishika. Ujaiachia, ujaipatia, ujaifanyishia na fasi ikufundishe. You have not given room for the anointing to teach you. You will become foolish. You will make mistakes. You will be one that assumes a lot. Even where you are not supposed to assume anything, you just assume. You will actually uh, become proud. But yet, in the wrong things. Slowly, you cut off the line that should service your life in destiny fulfillment. Ukikata mafuta, ama mafuta yako ya uduma, karama ikatike. Basu, napata kwamba, you start suffering in your career. When you see yourself start struggling in those other aspects, check your anointing in church. Magonye mengia kwako, sujui peso na nyanganywa, sujui vitu napotea, things go bad, you are stagnant, you are indebted, oh, I don't know, you have this battle, ukuna vita hile, umainukiwa hivi, mambo inenda vibaya, please check. Problem will not be in the marketplace. Mara mwingi, mafuta yako huko kanisa ni nekatika. Where you are supposed to serve, you are not serving. You do not tap at noite. So, all those marketplace manifestation, they depend on the anointing you tap in your ministry giftings. So when you are ministry, when you are anointing in this area, you are not well schooled or well educated, you are not taught, and you are not taught because your service line or anointing line is cut or is dry. Aye. Your destiny, fulfillment, pursuits, and endeavors will suffer hitches, will suffer stagnation, will suffer retrogression. 
will suffer what we call, Apostle Paul calls, shipwreck. You are wrecked. Hapo diyo magonjwa ineza kuja, ufukara ineza kuja, mapi, eh, kukataliwa ineza kuja, kuonewa ineza kujia, barabara hiyo. Plus kunyanganyo wa vitu. Plus kupata hasara. Ina kujenga line hiyo. Maana upande wa kanisani ulitharao mafuta. But we are supposed to exploit anointing for the purpose of destiny contention. So kanisani, ukotu sawa na mungu. Kule inje pia, unambia mungu baba ni mtumishi wako ni mafungwa hibi ya shara. Nomba mungu kwa hibi ya shara nione wema. Mwambia ile mafuta uli nipatia mungu, nitambue nayo katika hali yangu ya biashara hizi pia hii enjoy. Buwana asfiwe. <laughs> Buwana isa asfiwe. Buwana asfiwe. You do your own things. Don't come to me. When I teach you, then you disregard the place of this anointing. I will not waste my time. And I'll ask you, did you hear me teach? But persons who engage anointing may want to like, can I, uh, something here? I'll know. I say, okay, here. Because you are making use of the anointing. But I know what I'm saying. They have been tapping into anointing. They have been making room. Our summer well, fasting is for Onyango and the likes. Fasting is for the Onyango and his kind. Fasting is for those who are mature. Fasting is for those who are old guards. Fasting is for, fasting is for those who are spirit filled. Good. So I'll also answer you. The things of God are for those who have the spirit of God. So enda mali vitu za bure na patikana. So those of us who are servants of God, you want to operate with the gift of the Holy Spirit, please, there is a condition. Anointing of God will teach you all things. There are things, ambassador, you are like, okay. There are things that are so personal for a servant of God. So personal for a gifted saint that only the anointing will teach you. Does we have the Bible somewhere in Samakwamba and uh, a pastor, when your nails grow, you cut your nails after three days. And if you grow hair in your ears, make sure that every one week or three weeks you cut. Do you have that in the Bible? There are things only the anointing of God will teach you. Teach you hygiene. Teach you speech. Will teach you adornment. Will teach you presentation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People say that uh, Christianity is hard. It is hard for the rebels. If you choose to embrace the spirit and his anointing. Salvation will find it is easy. So the gifted, I'll be talking about uh, what frustrated gifts. Kuna watu ambao, there, hawaja fundishika, you are not uh, taught by the anointing. There are things you as a gifted person ukiaza kufanya, wipawaza kwa zinaza kukunjana, zinakunjana. That means anointing with draws. There are things we do in our lives as gifted. Kuna watu vipawaza kwa ikurusu usengenya watu. Aikurusu ukai usengenya watu. Anointing teaches you don't use your mouth to gossip. Because if you get to do that, wezi ombea mutu wapone. I pray, be healed in Jesus' name. Can you get healed now? Be healed or I beat you. Be healed or I crush you. Be healed or I curse you. Do you come away after this? All you do need drama. Like uh, the way we are Muslim and Afanya drama. And I think, uh, Nigi, in your patkan and Gefania Mgina Pia, Sabuna Sketwal Skuma Mutumoja Pekiake, 
Nasikia tu ni yale mzungu alisukuma tu mtu mmoja. In the name of Jesus akasukuma yeye huko. Samba hiyo ndio power. Ah. Na kama gevunjika mgongo. So those are dramas you can do because I'm not here came Arabic. So there are, there are things the gifted uh mistakes they make because the the anointing they are not schooled in the anointing kuna vita ufanye that's why kuna watu ambao chakula fulani nasikia you are on anointing see watu wote wanaambiwa wewe usikule hiyo vitu ukiambiwa please usifanye prophecy kwa wengine wote bwana amesema kwamba je watu wasifanye na hii please we get to be schooled in the anointing individually hallelujah Yeah, kama niliambiwa kutembea kwa masakati sakati nitembe. Why? Because masakati kwa napenda kupita. Hizi sakati ndogo ndogo unapita, unapata yokozuna ametokea pale. Na yeye pia anakuja mwanamke ni yokozuna. Sasa wewe pia unakuja pale leo ni 2GB. <laughs> Sasa mnakuja kifua na kifua, kifua na kifua. Na corridor yenyewe ni kidogo hivi. So zamani ungesema ah, wacha nikaa hivi, apita hivi na kipita hivi na kuguza guza na na mapaja yake na kupitia ukitoka hapo utasikia wewe ni mchafu so my gift uh, my anointing taught me ukiona yoko yani kuliko upatana uh, corridor stop shortcut ya ma corridor i stopped so ad- mimi nafuata barabara straight kama gari alafu <laughs> natokea hivyo those are things sasa nikuja niambie kila mtu kanisani bwana Uh, Rawa bwana amesema kanisa mzima wacheni tabia kupita pita corridor please onyango ilikuwa ni wewe haleluya ilikuwa ni mimi so mimi pia not in the foundation eh siwezi kandwa mabega kwa saloon na mwanamke tunapata so, pastor apostle eh anakandwa mgo na siste kwa kinyozi anasikia mm, mm, apostle nikikuja hapa kwa ubire to ubire vitu gani so mimi roho bwana kaniambia a a a a i say good so nikiingia mahali pa kunyoa watu nauliza rana <laughs> ananyoa wewe okay iko biashara nyingine baada ya kunyoa wanaangaliana eh atiko kutenda wa kuoshe pale nambi nana na niosha eh, kuna warembo pale nambi young man tiki na wia tiki na teacher the kama dia malizi be kichwa yangu eh, skandu yangu nywele na mimi sioshwe and that's how the meishi because i know sasa kuna kuaribiwa kichwa pale na wadada haleluya please sitaambia wanaume wengine kwamba wanaume Eh hey, bwana amesema msiendange kinyozi mukandwe nywele please those are personal things the anointing will teach you Hallelujah Yeah na wanawake pia sasa there are things ambazo don't impose on others wendo liambiwa so anointing will teach you na hizo sasa ni personal teachings personal sasa hapo Kuna manabii ambao ugali ugali imeungua kama ya sisi eh, ya sisi watu wa western ile ugali yenye kikulu nasikia mai kuwa ni ndio ugali hata suya ninakuambia ugali imeiva hapa kuna watu ambao kama ni nabii hiyo barabara utawachana utasikia roho bwana anakuambia chakula yako ni kama ya mtoto ile ugali uji uji hivi uh, manabii ukisikia hiyo kitu chako si mbaya huiva field ya prophecy is very wide darasa kila mtu kuna darasa yake unaambiwa wewe mwaka mmoja mzima unakula ugali ile uji uji na mboga mboga uji uji hiyo ndio fasting uliza Daniel asuja kusema kwamba eh bwana Yesu asema bwana amesema kwamba watu wote ambao ni manabii mkakula nga ugali mara prep mara prep ni nini <laughs> mara prep ni ugali hii uji uji hiyo ndio wewe peke yako unaikula la kichiko Aya <laughs> bwana asiwe bwana asiwe sasa di, kama wewe anointing ulikata itakukata kukufundisha because anointing doesn't force himself on people 
Je kuna watu manabia ambao unasia baada kwa sababu huko shule unaambiwa kichwa yako kitambara ni 24/7. Ukienda sio ndio kuoga na badilisha haraka sana tena unakausha alafu na mm. Usije kuambia wengine bwana anasema kwamba manabii wote wacheni mchezo hapa kwa nyinyi wote nyinyi wote kila mara 24/7 kitambaa. Uh-uh. Sio wote ni manabii. Haleluya. Kuna wale ambao wanaweza wanafunga kitamba wanako na freedom ya kui kuosha kichwa yao wachane hicho mwanajua eh alafu katika hali zao wanafunika kwa nyumbani eh katika hali zao ni manabii please wengine si manabii wengine wanafunga kitamba kwa mkuja kanisani hapo na sikia bwana apiga kelele wanaangalia nani anapigiwa kelele maana hata iwaguzi hawa ni watu wanafunga kitamba wakitaka eh bwana asiwe So if you kama utakubaliana na roho if you are in agreement with the anointing he will teach you to the smallest of things Na hapo unasikia kutembea na roho kutembea na na roho plus chakula kukula kwa hotel mi I can't tell watu wengine wote manabii wacheni kula kwa hoteli manabii wacheni kula kwa hoteli kuna watu ambao hoteli ndio maana unajua kukula na wana eh so ndio asambi watu wote hoteli ni mbaya mimi ndio nabii ambaye shule yangu niliambiwa kwamba tuachane na hoteli maana mimi nilikuwa na shida na hoteli kamka asubuhi na kai unafanya ushafanya hivyo mtu anakuja haraka sana supu napata maji kuja na kasupu kako au kusema asubuhi fanya tu they know kulatia supu nilikuwa na baada ya kunywa supu na hara kuhara so imagine mimi nikishahubiri hapa na ubiri hapa naambia <laughs> eh dakika moja tu kidogo na wacha mmehang mmeenda kumwaga kwa choo alafu narudi sasa discipline ya roho mtakatifu nilifundishwa so i know how to take care of my bowels hizo you learn by the holy ghost Haleluya. Anointing. So watch any power kuna makosa ngine ukifanya. Mungu anaroa bwana angalia. <laughs> Sema huyu tuachane naye kwanza. Kata line yake. Ajui discipline. Na inakatwa. Una back umekauka for a long time. Mungu nilikosa wapi? Mungu nilikosa wapi? Ataposwaambia niambie nilikosa wapi? Nimekuambia saa hii penye ulikosea. Tomorrow is another day. Haleluya. Tomorrow is another day. Hallelujah. By your hand let's pray. Precious Father, thank you. Once again, Lord, the opportunity to share your word. Baba watu wako nimewalisha neno, I've shared with them your word. And I pray that let there be many whom Lord my Father will embrace the anointing to teach them Lord in matters giftings and matters of ministry. I'm praying the Lord you help us as a church because some of us Lord are frustrating your work because they are ignorant in their giftings and Lord by extension their destinies are being frustrated because they major in the minor and Lord they want to front the minor as the major. We baba I pray that today we all be learned we all be taught by your anointing who teaches us all things. And so father may you grant that Lord we come Lord work us Lord that brings honor to you because of being learned in the anointing. Thank you so much Lord for as many as you've given to be able to hear this word. I pray that this word shall transform them. This word Lord shall enlighten them. This word shall instruct them. This word shall guide them. This word shall enlighten their paths. This word my father go shall grant us change of mind change of our heart and change of our ways we worship you and we praise you grant the lord as many also be online may they be not only hearers of the word but doers of the word we thank you and we honor you in jesus name we pray amen in the name of jesus we pray in the name of jesus we pray number two munga wasaidie bana anointing is a very wide subject that I may want to be very systematic but I can't because it takes time
So I'll be in Takwani Maguzi Aguzi Ahapa. So that is matters, giftings, and ministry, which I'll be exhausting during the convocation of the annual prophetic summit. So to the end there, the one hour position. So those of us who fasted and prayed, you made room for the anointing. And uh, I pray that uh, you shall not lose, but you shall make gain. Despite my sadaka zetu, kama uli tembea nayo, kama una otoko kwa simu mtowe, barikiwa na buwana, those of us who are pledges, do so. Father, as we leave and go home, thank you, Lord, for opportunity to serve you, Lord, with our giftings and our sacrifices. I pray that, Father, you shall have regard to sacrifices that are made in righteousness. Help us, my Father, the Lord God. We shall not mock you with our sacrifices. The Lord are given in hypocrisy as well as in wickedness. I ask you, the Lord Jesus, may you grant that your mountain and your altar will not accept or allow givings that, Lord, are questionable. I discount myself from such, and may the altar also discount them, and, Lord, only that which is acceptable before you be accepted. May you so much, Lord, provide for people who are needy. May you also, Lord, supply unto them the Lord God are believing you. May you also heal some the Lord are sick. Heal them, my Lord, as they lift their faith. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness. May you help us, Lord, as our days near, Lord, for um, annual prophetic summit. I pray the Lord, as many as be uh, partakers of your grace, will not ab abuse grace or misuse the anointing. As we live, Father, be with us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God be with you all. And uh, tonight, prophetesses and prophets, prayers goes on, even as we also wait other prophets to come, intercessors who can join also, pastors also. Uh, you're welcome. In the water, we can uh, go home, prepare for the summit tomorrow also. We have our prayer rally as well. Let's be here.